Marta Jones surveyed her students, casting her eyes around the studio with its high ceilings and skeins upon skeins of coloured yarn hanging from laundry racks raised up with pulleys and secured on the wall, and the six wooden looms pressed against one another, for space was at a premium. Her desk, a battered oak table set next to the door, was covered in papers, books, and drawings, and to her right, as she faced her class, an ancient chaise long was draped with an old red velvet counterpane to hide darnings and tears in the upholstery. Several spinning wheels were set against the wall to the left of the room, alongside a box where she kept wool collected on Sunday excursions into the country. Of course, she ordered untreated wool directly from her suppliers, but she liked to collect tufts from the hedgerows, where sheep had pressed against hawthorn and bramble to ease an itch and left behind a goodly pull of their coats. She had taken on students with some reluctance, even though the rent on her studio close to the Albert Hall was cheap enough due to an ancient land law that provided for artists, her commissions had diminished, and she was forced to look for additional income. So she had placed one small advertisement in the newspaper, and written to those who had purchased her works in the past, to let them know that she was taking in a small number of students to learn the art and craft of traditional tapestry. In general, her students were a motley group, and definitely better off. The working classes could barely afford to eat, let alone spend money on frivolities. There were two ladies from Belgravia who thought it might be rather fun to spend a Saturday afternoon or evening here each week, chatting as they worked their shuttles back and forth, following the sketched cartoon image that lay beneath the lines of warp and weft. Another two friends, well-funded students from the Slade, seeking a class beyond their regular curriculum, had joined as had a poet who thought that work in colour would enhance the rhythm and pulse of his language. Then there was the woman who spoke little, but who had come to Marta's studio after seeing the advertisement. Watching her now, the artist was fascinated by this particular student, drawn to the changes she had observed since class began. The woman had explained that she had recently been exposed to the world of art. She said it as if it were an unfamiliar country, and that she wanted to do something artistic, as her work was far removed from such indulgence. She had smiled and gone on to say that she had never produced a proper painting, even as a child, and she thought she could not sketch at all, but she was drawn to tapestry, attracted to the weaving of colour and texture, to a medium that did not present an immediate image, but when one stood back to regard the day's endeavour, a picture began to take form. It's rather like my work, she had said and when Marta asked about the woman's profession, she paused for a moment and then drew out a card, which she offered to the artist. It said simply, Maisie Dobbs, psychologist and investigator. Marta thought that this one evening each week was the woman's only recreation, but with each class, something about her seemed to change almost imperceptibly, though the artist found the effect to be quite extraordinary. Her clothes had become more colourful, her artistry more bold as she gained confidence. On the evening when they had experimented with dyeing, taking the yarns they had spun during the previous week, pressing them down into buckets of dye, and then pulling them out to hang first over sinks in the studio's own scullery, before looping them over laundry racks to dry, she had rolled up her sleeves and simply laughed when colour splashed across her face. The Belgravia matrons had frowned, and the poet appeared shy, but soon this woman, who had appeared so reticent at first, so slow and measured in her interactions with fellow students, had come to be the linchpin in the class, without saying much at all. And, Marta thought, she was very good at drawing out stories. Why, only today, while Maisie worked at her loom, her fingers nimble as she wove threads of purple, magenta, and yellow, she had asked the teacher but two questions, and soon knew the entire story of the woman's coming to England from Poland as a child. In fact, as she answered the questions that Maisie Dobbs put to her, the whole class knew in short order that Marta's father had insisted that his children learn only English, so that they would fit in and not be marked as foreigners. And her mother had ensured the family dressed in a way that did not set them apart from their new friends, who knew them as the Jones family, that most British of names, adopted as they disembarked from their ship once it had docked at Southampton. Marta smiled as she watched Maisie Dobbs work at her loom and picked up her card again. Psychologist and investigator. Yes, 
She must be very good at her trade. This woman who had, without any effort at all, encouraged six people to tell her far more about themselves than they would ever imagine recounting, and all without revealing much about herself.'